Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the 31 pairs of spinal nerves. These are the nerves that shoot out and away and come back in to the spinal cord. We're also gonna take a quick look at the nerve plexuses. This is where some of the nerves that shoot out and away come together to form a bundle and then branch back out again. And this bundle or network is what we term a plexus. You have a cervical plexus, a brachial plexus, a lumbar plexus, and a sacral plexus. And we're gonna focus on some important nerves that are clinically relevant within each of these nerve plexuses. So first, let's look at the spinal cord. You can see that there's particular areas, such as the cervical area, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and coccygeal areas. The cervical area has eight pairs of spinal nerves, the thoracic has 12, the lumbar has five, the sacral has five, and the coccygeal has one. All together, 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Now, how do you remember these particular numbers? Well, think about the times that old people eat. Old people like to eat at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. Therefore, eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, and there's also gonna be five sacral on top of that. All right, let's have a look at the nerve plexuses. So first, cervical nerve plexus. The first to fourth cervical nerves, C1, C2, C3, C4, all come together to form a bundle and branch. Again, and this is termed the cervical plexus. These nerves innovate the back of the head, the neck, and the shoulders for sensation and movement. And importantly, what you're gonna find is if you were to take C3, C4, and C5, Together, you'll find that they form the phrenic nerve, and the phrenic nerve is the nerve that innovates the diaphragm, tells it to contract, allows for us to breathe. That's why we say C3, 4, 5 keeps us alive. If you had a spinal cord injury that damaged C3, C4, C5, then it means that your phrenic nerve won't innovate, the diaphragm will not contract, you will not breathe. That's why a lot of cervical spinal cord injuries can be deadly. If we move down and have a look at C5, to T1, so cervical nerve five, six, seven, eight, and thoracic nerve one come together to form the brachial plexus, and the brachial plexus innervates the arm. Now there's a bunch of nerves associated here, but I want you to remember three. That's the median nerve, the radial nerve, and the ulnar nerve. So the median nerve, like its name, goes down the middle, innervates middle aspect of the hand and some fingers, and what you'll find is this nerve goes underneath the carpal ligament right here. Sometimes people have problems with this carpal ligament impinging on that median nerve, and it can result in carpal tunnel. The radial nerve, the radial nerve which innervates part of the arm and then goes down and innervates a lot of the hand, you'll find that some people after having too many drinks can go home and fall asleep on their couch with their arm over the back of the couch or depending on how pissy you actually are, fall asleep on a park bench, throw that arm over the park bench and it can impinge on that radial nerve and result in that arm basically being a dead arm, okay? So this is called Saturday night palsy. And then the ulnar nerve, the ulnar nerve has this arcuous journey around the elbow and goes and innervates that pinky finger. And therefore, when you stimulate here what we term the funny bone, we get that tingling in the finger. That's because of the ulnar nerve. Let's have a look at the lumbar plexus. So the lumbar plexus is L1 to L4. Forming this plexus, an important nerve is that of the femoral nerve that shoots out of this lumbar plexus, and the femoral nerve innervates the thigh, specifically the anterior, medial, and some lateral aspects of the thigh. It allows for our thigh to bend, or allows for the leg to bend at the knee, and it innervates, for example, the rectus femoris, the sartorius, and the three vasti muscles of the thigh. If we go down and look at the sacral plexus, that's L4 to S4, okay? Lumbar four, lumbar five, sacral one, two, three, four, and five forms the sacral plexus. An important nerve here that I want you to remember is the sciatic nerve, innervating the ass, the back of the thigh, and everything below the knee. Some people who have impingement of the sciatic nerve can get tingling, numbness, pain, and depending on the severity, they may have foot drop. Because it innervates everything below the knee, their foot may not work properly, and when they lift that leg, we know the lifting of the leg is important, it's not coming from the sacral plexus, lifting of that leg, then when they go to move that leg, the foot drops because the sciatic nerve isn't working very well, okay? So this is the spinal nerves as an overview, the important plexuses of the spinal cord, and also having a look at some of the important clinical nerves of the spinal nerves as well.